I join. What's the meeting ID? Watch your head, Patrick. I've got this right behind your head. I, what do you mean? You just go back to Zoom and. Meetings? Yeah, then just click join. I join. Yep. Join. Yes. Do you have the meeting ID, Jeannie? Because it's not like. Patrick, we can see and hear you. You're muted right now, but we can see the machine and. We could hear you a minute ago. Hey, ladies, we're just setting up. We'll be with you in just a little bit. I'm going to mute this. And uh, there was an error. So while you guys are waiting for this small bag, I know. I'm so sorry. Let me grab my stuff. For this small bag, your fabric should have been, so if you could cut this, it'll work if you leave it the way it is, but the lining and the batting should have been 11 by three and a half instead of 11 by two and a half. We can make it work with the 11 by two and a half, so if you don't have any more of that fabric, um, but if you can, go ahead and cut another piece, the batting 11 by two, uh, three and a half and lining 11 by three and a half. And I'll give you everyone a chance to uh, do that when we, um, in just a minute, when we get started. I'm just gonna be admitting people into the room. The small one, that one. Admit. So we've got extra in the room. So it's just the one. The three, the two and a half, it, it's it's small and a half. it needs to be three and a half. So we need the batting and that cut 
for three okay. of Hey, have we started? I just got here. I did too. Oh, I can't hi. get I don't see anyone else. Oh, hi, just a... <laughs> I didn't Where recognize you, you at first. See? Just you. We haven't oh, started yet, that. ladies. Don't worry, okay. I'm just getting started. So we haven't started yet. Um, okay. If you are just joining, I did. there was an error and I fixed it. But I fixed it this morning uh, for this small bag. Here's my small bag. The batting and the top lining need to be 11 by three and a half. I think the, uh, the guy that I sent you sent you said 11 by two and a half. So if you have Mine's another scrap of batting, if you could go ahead and cut it, cut your batting and another lining piece, 11 and a half by two and a half. If you don't, we can make it work. No, but three and a half. Three and a half, uh, yeah. Three and a half. I really want to comment on the fact that you'll be able to see people watching on the standard Facebook page, but not on the sell along page. And those comments will appear. I'm going to see most people will be on Zoom. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. Just give me one more minute, ladies. I am not firing at all cylinders. I, uh, I'm fighting this cold and uh, you know what is amazing? Daytime. So I grew up, my dad's a pediatrician and um, I grew up, I hate to say it, but I feel like I was like an antibiotic kid. Like if I got sick, my dad would put me on an antibiotic. So through, I want to say I was probably in my 20s before I took an over-the-counter. And now what I realize is I didn't need all those antibiotics. <laughs> um, I think it was kind of the generation. That's what they did is they just put you on antibiotics all the time. Um, so, you know, the first time I took an over-the-counter was um, when I was pregnant. So I was, oh my goodness, like I was in my 30s. Um, and Patrick went away on a trip and, uh, I'm just, um, hi, Miss Carol, uh, Patrick went away on a trip. I'm going to be finishing this on my serger too. So I have my serger set up right here. This is going to, this is the triumph. And, uh, I was so sick, just like a runny nose and I couldn't even function. And he told me to take Sudafed and I'd never taken it before. And, I was like, oh my God, this is a miracle drug. It was just like a head cold. That was all it was. Hang on, I'm just admitting some other people in here. Are right, we starting with the small one or the large one? Let's go ahead and let's start with the small one. And you oh, can really okay. choose any panel that you want. Just choose any small one. And I didn't want, I wanted you to rough cut it out. So don't worry okay. about having it like completely cut out. And while people are coming in, I'm just going to go ahead and thread my serger. But um, there was an error with uh, the cut instructions I gave you. So I'm going to give everyone a minute. Hopefully you can all do this. Why is this not letting me let you in? The um, lining, top lining and batting piece need to be three and a half by 11. I had given you 11 by two and a half. So if you can cut one more piece of batting and one more piece of lining fabric, you can make it work with the 11 by two and a half, but it's going to be better if you have the 11 by three and a half. Hey, Jeannie, what size of needle are you using? Um, I'm going to use what's in here. I want an eight. You know what? I almost always use like an 8012 Microtex okay. or a 9014. Go one of those two. Okay, what do I have in you. here? I have no idea what's even in here. Michelle was in here and she loves a 9014 top stitch needle. So 
I like that too. A 94 top, top stitch needle is great. Remember, you are, shoot, hang on. Let me let some more people in. Why is it not letting me let these people in? Um, Hi, um, good afternoon. Are you going to show us what you cut out? Sure. Yeah, we'll take it slow for the first one. I'll make sure everyone's all together. Okay. Just a second. Let me get to, hey, Patrick. You admit all. Hang on, Patrick's got me on a, uh, like the screen that I don't recognize. Let me go back to Streamlabs. All right, I'll just leave this for now. All right, ladies, we're just gonna let everyone kind of trickle in right now. Um, I'm gonna be using my digital dual feed walking foot which is gonna be this right here. So I'm gonna be using this one. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. Now, if you have just a regular ankle, that's gonna be fine. And if you are just trickling right now, right now it's 1032. I gave you a miss, uh, I accidentally put in your supplies that you needed to cut 11 by two and a half. This is the small bag. We're gonna start off with the small bag, the 11 by two and a half. And it should have been 11 by three and a half. So take a minute right now and cut one more piece of batting. That's 11 by three and a half. And your top lining piece, that's going to be the piece that goes behind here. You want 11 by three and a half. So take a minute and just cut those two right now. Do you want me to pull the Zoom screen up? I Yeah. Can you, how do I pull that up? Because I need to spotlight this and I don't know how to, um, or is it? <laughs> We are simulcasting and how can I, so, so this is my screen that's your right Zoom here. Screen. Yep. I need to spotlight it. Spotlight for everyone. There we go. But I want my view to be gallery. Amy, which Perfect. foot do we want for our dual feed? Quarter inch oh, or open? Quarter inch. Let's go quarter okay. inch. And if you don't have that, you're just gonna use your regular feet, your regular quarter inch. I brought all of mine. So I have my um, open toe, which I'm gonna be using. Shoot, did that let them in? Hang on, admit, admit, close. Okay, I think we're good. All right. So I'm gonna be using this. If you haven't done it already and you have that, um, this is the quilt guide. So we have a couple of Different quilt guides. Oh, Patrick didn't grab the right one. Hang on just a second. So if you have, and you don't have to be on a fancy machine to do this project. That's one of the things I love about this project. It's gonna be so fun. I'm not hearing, is everyone else hearing me? Give me a thumbs up if you hear me. Okay, so Ms. Connie, if you're not hearing, you uh, just turn up the volume on, on your, um, see if you can turn up the volume on your computer because everyone else is hearing me. So it must be a setting on your end. Um, this is a regular quilt guide and if you're on different machines, you're gonna have different quilt guides, but this one, I'm gonna open it this up. You can use this one and Baby Lock makes one, Brother makes one. If you're on a Bernina, Bernina makes one. Whatever brand you have, they make a quilt guide. And a lot of people have never used one before. So this, you can plug in a couple different ways, okay? And um, the reason why I wanna do the quilt guide now is because I'm gonna have to take this off of my machine to put it on, uh, to put the quilt guide on. So I wanna put the top on first, but on the regular machines, if you're using a walking foot, this walking foot you're gonna see has a little hole here in the back. And that is where you can squeeze in this little quilt guide, okay? It'll go right in there. If you don't have a walking foot, you're also gonna have 
a spot on the back of your regular shank. So if we look at the shank right here, let me get this out of the way. All right, it's right here. There's a little black piece. Let me see if I can zoom in. So right back here, and you want it to be snug. You don't want your quilt guide wiggling around. So I like to take my finger and put it on the left side and just take this, hang on, let me move the camera out of the way so I'm not hitting it. And you are going to wiggle him in, but support it over here because I have seen people just push that black part right out. So you can go ahead and push it right in just like that. You want it snug and when you're not using it, you can just lift him up and out of the way, okay? So that is gonna be the quilt guide. Now, if you're using the dual feed quilt guide, and this is gonna go on the top of your machine. Baby Lock makes one. And it comes with this little top. This needs to get screwed into the top of your dual feed foot. And I know this might be boring for some of you, but let's take the time to just do it right now so we're all set. I'm gonna take this one. This, if you buy the brother one, the baby lock, they sell the right and the left separately. If you buy the brother one, and if you wanna get this afterwards, send me a note and I will uh, do it at 20% off. Just remind me. Um, it's gonna have one top and then it comes with the left and the right. So it comes with, you know, you don't have to buy all the parts separately. So here is the little part that gets screwed into the top of your dual feed. I'm gonna use the right quilt bar. The, you, the reason they give you a left is so you don't have to swing your fabric around. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one right here. So I'm gonna put this one away. I'm gonna take this one off. We've got a lot going on here. If you have any questions, you can unmute Mama, and ask your question. Class. If we have a Solaris or Luminera, are we just gonna use the sure? camera or the projector? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you have a Solaris and Luminaire, don't even worry about okay. the Thanks, quilt bar because you can, we're going to use the guideline markers. We'll do one with quilt bar or I'll show you how to set that up as well. But I'm going to, some people don't have the guideline markers, so we're going to oh, set this up really quickly and you know how to use it. All right. Screwdriver. I'm going to just take that. Don't lose that little screw. He is going to go right on top of this part right here. Whoops. Is is this the one that I'm? Um, you know what? I think that is it. I can't really tell Shirley. Does it? I mean, did it? Is this for your your Solaris and Luminaire? Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Uh, it's uh, it's a uh, Altair. It's for the Altair. The Altair is going to use it too. Is it okay. the brother one or the, or the, um, is it a brother one or the baby lock one? Uh, it, it's a baby lock, but it looks different than your, it has yeah, like a ditch foot. It is only going to have, um, yeah, that doesn't quite look like it to me. It, it has so, like a stitch in the ditch kind of foot. Well, I mean, I have this. Does it look like this where it has two parts? Yes. That okay, that's, that's, it's that's just, it. It's just this arm. It looks like it's an addition. I oh, I could take it off. I could. Uh, I took it apart. Oh my god! I am like butterfingers today. Let me go ahead and put this on. Okay, so this is going to go right into this part. Do you see that? But we have yeah. to go ahead and put this onto the top of the machine. And uh, there's going to be a screw. So you're going to put it up here just like that. We have a screw that's going to screw on this left side. How about I use a good screwdriver and not just my fingers? Sorry, we just got a little bit of setup and I wanted to show you this because I know some people have, have these and they've never used them before. This is when I wish I had one of those screwdrivers that the boys have, the techs have in the back. Are we quilting first? I need to do a thread change. We are not quilting first. We are gonna be, uh, first we're gonna be trimming and then we are gonna be, um, we're gonna trim and then we're gonna sew and then we're gonna quilt and then we'll sew again. 
And I made a little cheat sheet and I'll send it to you afterwards. It has just like my notes on it. You may or may not find it uh, useful. <laughs> I think it'll be useful. I'm pretty anal, so maybe it's like too much information. Okay. Now we're not gonna have to remove it. We're set up to go. I'm gonna put it on there nice and tight and we're gonna leave it there. Once you get that on there, you're not taking it on and off. It's just gonna live up there, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put on my dual feed walking foot. So let me go ahead and move all this stuff out of the way. My favorite screwdriver is going to be this one right here. Participants, you all. Okay, gonna get just unscrew that. We'll go ahead and take this off. Jeannie, I screwdriver. hate to be a bother. What was that? I hate to be a bother, but could you tell me on the dual feed walking foot, does it go on? I, I couldn't find my stupid thing, but I found it. Does okay. it go on the back groove of the walking foot? When you say, uh, are you talking about this top part? Yeah. Is it in it's going to go right, right here on the top. If you have the baby lock one, yours is going to look a little bit different. It's going to be black and it kind of sits up here on the top. Uh -huh. um, it's going to look like this. I got that one, but I was just it wondering like where, this. where on this foot do I put it? Where on the dual feet do I put it? Same, same spot that I put, I put this on here on the very top right there. This is going to go on top. Okay. And it's going to go like this. And, I'm and when you put the baby too. lock one on, you're going to tighten it here and on the other side. So give it a little turn on the left side. Give it a little turn on the right side. A little turn on the left. A little turn on the right. So does that make sense? This is going to be on the top. That is where your cold bar is going to squeeze into. And this is where it's going to attach. So it should go like this. Just imagine me yeah, putting the this part like that's this. The part that's weird is I can't get it to go. It's like the shaft of the foot is too thick. Um, it should, uh, you know what? You might have to open it up a little bit. So those screws are coming in a little bit. So uh -huh. you might have to unscrew it a little bit and then put it on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Try Sorry. that. Sorry. It's okay. Jeannie, <clears throat> Jeannie yeah. it's Ellie. Where I did said you get? Where did you get that screwdriver? I've been looking for that one. Are you talking about this one? Yeah. We sell them here in the store, but we buy okay. them from Tony. Yeah, we have them okay. here. So um, you have to be careful. This, this is gonna work with the larger format machines. It's not gonna work with like the Aventura or um, that one. I have another one that's smaller. It's like, a, we have a yellow one and a, I think it's a blue one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on now, but you do want to put this on first. If you're going to be using quilt bar, if you do not have the guideline markers, the only machines that are going to have the guideline markers are going to be the, um, uh, the Solaris and the Luminaire. I just saw a message, but it flashed up really quickly. Carol, did you ask a question? Again, hand tighten, never just hand tighten. You always want to take it and tighten it a little bit more with a screwdriver. Don't over tighten. Like I literally went like that. That's as much as I tightened. I turned it that much more, but it should never be loose enough for you to undo by hand. The other thing is if you're using this foot, plug it in. If you don't plug it in, you're going to be like, that's the worst foot I've ever used in my life because that's what I thought until I plugged it in. Every once in a while, I forget to put, oh wait. Oh my goodness, the message just went up again. What is the product number? Is that what somebody just asked? And if you're asking the product number, are you asking about this? Because this is gonna be, you can look it up on our website. I wanna say it's the advanced screwdriver, the advanced screwdriver. And then this is gonna be the dual feed uh, quilting guide. And if you remember to put in your notes that you want a 20% discount, we're actually going to 15, but I'll do 20% for this class. Um, just put in your notes, you want the product and you want your discount and I'll give you a little discount on it. Oh, I can't see. Okay, here we go. And I can just leave this here and I can just flip it up if I'm not gonna be using it. Just popping on, we should, there is no written pattern, like the, the top of the panel, had some instructions 
So I made, here are my handy dandy instructions, which I think will make more sense as we do it. Um, but I'll send this to everybody. I'll, uh, I'll put this in the sew along group and um, I'll send this to you. Zippy bag instructor notes. That would be me, but it could be a zippy bag notes for everybody. Okay. First of all, let's go ahead and trim our piece down. Let me grab all of this. Grab my ruler. Jeannie, can you tell me where the plug is for the walking foot? What was that? Can you tell me where the plug is for the walking foot? When you plug it in in the back? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, well, I don't know if you can see it, but do you see it right here? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So just peek around to the back, you'll see it there. I'm having trouble plugging it in. Um, stand up, peek around the back and give it another go. It should go in pretty easily. All right, I am gonna grab my small bag. So I just wanted you to rough cut it out and you can pick whichever one you want. So I just grabbed this one. I was like, oh, let's just do this. And we're gonna go ahead and trim this. Let me grab my embroidery cutter. Are you gonna give us a minute after you demo? Because I've got to go in another room to cut. You do. Um, okay, I'll give you I'll give you a little a little time. First thing we're gonna do, because I wanted you to just rough cut it around here. We are gonna, this is our back and this is gonna be the top front, okay? I want you to go ahead and I want you to separate the back from the, from the front. Don't cut anywhere else yet. And we're just gonna cut right on this line. And fabric, you know, fabric isn't always straight. So if you have to move your ruler as you go, that's totally fine too. Yeah. Yeah, how much did you want to? It's in the drawer, in the that standing thing. Where I, have. I don't know, just give it to her, it's fine. Okay, after you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim around this. Do not trim right on the printed dash line. What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and I want you to trim about an eighth of an inch. Just a little bit. You could do a quarter of an inch or whatever you want. I'm going to do an eighth of an inch. Love. So we're going to go ahead and trim around this. So you want to leave a little bit of white. We will trim on that line once we've finished our quilting. Okay, this is the back piece. So it's gonna be cut right on the line separating it. Then we're gonna go an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then this is the top. Don't trim this yet where the zipper goes. We're first gonna trim the eighth of an inch all the way around the, the three sides. Now your panel is gonna tell you what zipper to choose. So hopefully you got the matching zippers for this because the price is so good. I wanna say it's what, $14.99 for the eight zippers and then we did them at 20% off. And they're so nice. And I love the way they have that center pull or they have the double pull. So before I cut this apart, cause I always forget, I want to pick out my zipper. So I'm gonna grab the zippers that came with my zipper, zippy bags too. I've already used a bunch of mine. I love the colors that are, I love the colors that are used too. They're super pretty. So I'm gonna do the green one. And do you have to do the green one? No, you can do whichever one you want, but <laughs> I don't know about you ladies, but sometimes I don't wanna think. I feel like I think all day and sometimes I just wanna go, Green. All right, choose the green. June, I hope your mom is sewing. Is she gonna be is she prepping? Hi, Julie. So here is the green zipper. 
Uh, the reason I want you to pull it now is because we're going to actually cut that, and then I always forget. Let me get this guy out. Okay, here's my green zipper. We're going to do one, and then we'll do another one, so it'll stick. Well, there'll be a replay for this. It's being recorded, and it's being simulcast, so you'll have it all different places. Okay, we're going to trim this. What you need to keep in mind is you're not cutting on that line. We're gonna be sewing a quarter of an inch from here. And I want you to take into account that instead of putting this, and do you see how I'm lining it up? I know I have a little bit of glare. Let me see if I can get a better angle without that glare. Here, that's better, huh? Okay, so if I were to put this down with my quarter inch right here, I would be putting it right next to it. You want to uh, just move it over a, a smidge. Do you see that? So instead of having your quarter inch right on that, we're going to move it over a little bit so that we can encase that white so none of the white is showing. So I'm going to go ahead and slice that. So put your quarter inch right on the edge of the design part and then nudge it over to the left the tiniest bit. Go ahead and do that and trim, and then you're going to do that on this side too. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. This is the front bottom. This is the front top. Now I'm going to do this one too. So I'm going to put my quarter inch right down on this line, and then I'm going to nudge it to the left the tiniest bit. And we just got more panels in too. So if you didn't get a panel, or you wanna get more, we have the ones and I have a couple of the twos left. All right, and that's what it should look like. So you should have your back, this is the back, and then this is gonna be the front. Go ahead and trim that, I'll give you a minute. Anyone has any questions, go ahead and you can unmute if you need to. Here are our notes. So what we did is we cut on the dash line to separate the front from the back. Then we cut around the front part and the back part around an eighth of an inch outside the dash line. Don't separate the front part until you trim around the outside. And then we're gonna cut a hair less, like a 16th of an inch, uh, a hair less than a quarter of an inch to separate the front top from the front bottom. Don't cut on the dash zipper line. Now we're gonna cut out the tab exactly under the dash line. So get your tabs, here are my tabs, right here. You can choose the one that you want. I've just been using whichever one. Whichever I started on the outside and cut into the inside, they all go. So this you're gonna cut right out and why don't you cut two of them out? You're gonna cut right on that dash line. So go ahead and do that. We're gonna cut two of these out. How are we doing, ladies? If you have a question, ask. I'd rather get you caught up right now than have you fall behind and be asking later on. But we'll just take our time. Everything's easy peasy. You'll get the recording too. Don't feel stressed out. Okay, okay. cut two of the, yes, go ahead. Um, these you want us to cut right on the dash line. We're cutting right on the dash line. So you should have four, four rectangles and you're just trimming right around them. So it should look just like that. Is the quilting gadget required? Quilting gadget is not required. Nope. You do not have to use it. So go ahead and cut those out. So what you should have is the top, the, uh, the front, top and bottom, and then the back. And then we're gonna have these tabs cut out. Um, what we're gonna do next is we are gonna go ahead and sew the tabs together and we're sewing them right side to right side on the long edge, quarter of an inch. So let's go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna be using my quarter inch sole. So I'm gonna be using this right here.
and pick out your thread. I'm gonna use variegated because I love variegated. And every, anytime I can use variegated, I do. Hang on, let me, I'm adjusting my camera a little bit. Okay, these are so great because with this jewel feed, you just pop them on. They just go on and off super easily. I'm going to, for this, I don't know why, I just love this thread and I use it for like everything. And, oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't grab a, I didn't grab a bobbin. Let me just grab, I'm just going to use this on the inside just because nobody's going to see it and it's really close. So I'm going to go pop in my bobbin. Just choose whatever thread you want. You don't have to be picky. If you want polyester, if you want cotton, whatever you want to use, you can use. So I'm going to go ahead. Mm -hmm. and pop I my... had... I'm sorry. Go I had to go cut my tabs out because I didn't know I needed to. I now have myself set up to cut in my sewing room, which is good. Did I miss something on cutting the tabs out? We just cut on the lines, right? Just cut on the line. This is it. Okay. We're not, we didn't cut the zipper or anything. Nope, we didn't okay. cut the zipper. We're good. Okay, I'm gonna thread my upper. Whoop. Wrap there, aren't I? All right. We're gonna sew quarter inch. So, and I want you to back stitch too. So what I'm gonna do is you can either use a little leader if you want. I'm just gonna start right about here. So forward, back and forward, and I'm gonna back stitch here. So go ahead and sew those two together. While you're doing this, I want you to heat up your iron because we're gonna press them when we're done. So go ahead and heat up your iron. I'm just sewing, I'm just gonna leave it at 2.5. There goes my phone, hang on. Right thing sides together. My amazing strong thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I really dumb. Good. A quarter inch, get right sides together. Oh, I have it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was Long that? Ways. Can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Um, right sides together, quarter inch long ways. Yeah, we're going to just take your little right. tab and we're going to fold it over and we're going to sew a quarter inch on the long edge. The control. Where are you? Hang on, I'm plugging this in. I'm a foot control girl. You can use start stop, but for me, I am not talented enough to use start stop. I always, I'm like off the fabric before I can start or stop. So I'm just going to sew forward a little bit, back a little bit. And I'm going to do both of these and then we'll turn them right side out. Whoa, that's like watching the grass grow. Let me turn up my speed a little bit. There we go. And then let's go ahead and do the other one. I have my auto pivot set up so it'll just automatically lift the foot for you if you have that feature and you haven't been using it it's right here on your screen it might be in different spots in your screen but that's your auto lift and i love the auto lift here we go here we go and if you're a pin or pin if it like hurts your heart to not pin, I want you to pin. But if you can go without, go without. <laughs> My favorite pins to use when I'm really trying to match up is I use uh, I use magic pins and I love the patchwork ones because they're really, really skinny. Okay, I'm just gonna cut these two apart. We're gonna turn them right side out. You can do all different things to turn them right side <clears throat> out. I just brought a safety pin with me. 
How far did you sew into your material? What was that? How far did you sew into your material? I'm not sure. I did a quarter inch seam. Is that what you're asking? Okay. Yes. Yeah, quarter inch. Who is that? It's Annette, of course. Annette? <laughs> I'm really sad today. My sewing machine broke down. Oh, no. Yeah, oh it's God, not working. Horrible. Okay, you want, ladies, I'm so sorry. I literally threw like two safety pins in my stuff. Give me just a second. I know, I, I, you know what happens? I start to get nervous when I'm doing like a sew along and I know it's right in front of my face. Let me just grab my safety pins. Mm. Okay, if you ever need a safety pin, you can come ask me because I have this big box. <laughs> Anytime there's like a kit that needs to be made and it calls for a safety pin, I throw these in. How are oh, we ever going to use all of these? I would take your safety pin and just put it here on this edge. So the edge that you're uh, that you just sewed. And you're just going to take it and you're going to tuck it down into the little hole. And then we're gonna turn this right side out. And that's it. And when I have a long strap, I have like fast turns. I have, um, uh, sometimes if I'm doing a long strap, I'll do a ribbon. So there's lots of different ways you can do it, but. There we go. And your iron should be hot. We're going to press these. We're going to just press it the way it is. And then we're going to press it. Um, we're going to press it in half. So there's one. I'm going to pretend I'm nice and neat. I just like move stuff aside. Okay, here's the second one. Just here in the edge that you just sewed and get it down into the hole. Did you have another machine that you can sew on, Anetta? Um, I'm kind of bummed right now. <laughs> Are you just but, watching? Yeah, I'm watching and I'm doing everything along okay. with you, so. Um, the company is going to come get it and cause I, we just got it. Oh no. Yeah, it's something, okay. something wrong with the motherboard or something. It's not Ooh, responding. Okay. Well, yeah. you'll have the video. You'll be able to do it. Okay? Yeah. I'll be fine. Oh Thank my God, you. Cheryl, am I that boring? I think Cheryl's sleeping. <laughs> okay. Wish you lived near me. Oh yeah. Cheryl's saying. Ooh, we've got a lot of stuff back here now. We've got like a, like a mic arm. All right, we're just gonna press these. Hope my big fat head doesn't get in the way. And kind of roll it out. You know what I mean? Like kind of get it flat. I have an extra one. Oh, Sharon, that's so, I mean, no, is that Shannon? Is that Shannon Brat? Shannon said if you were near her, she would just sew with you. Okay. I love my sewing gals and gents. Sorry, I know I had to go in front of that. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, so you're going to press these and then press them in half. Oh, these are like the cutest ones ever. I picked the cutest tabs ever. And just go ahead and fold it like right on that line and give it one more press. And then we're going to sew about an eighth of an inch in there, just kind of hold it together so it doesn't move when we go to sew it down. These are so fun. Are they? Oh my God, they're so fun. You should add your name to the list and I have like a little, like, I don't know, okay. cheat sheet. I will. Yeah, I really like them. Michelle got, got them yeah. Michelle got, got she got the panels. Do you mind bringing me one of no. each? Michelle got panels because she has a good friend uh, and they're gonna sew it together. They're gonna do like a little sew day together even though they don't live close together 
but we can still sew together. I know this is a quarter inch foot, but I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to eyeball it. And I want to sew right here about an eighth of an inch away. And I'm going to start with my needle in my fabric. And I don't care that it's not like on the end or anything. And I'm going to do this one too. So just about an eighth of an inch. So I'm not putting it right next to my flange. That would be a quarter of an inch. I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch. Just so they're together, so they don't move. Slow down a little bit. I'm still turning my stuff. Okay. Please. That's what I need, ladies. If you if I'm going too fast, make sure you just give me a little shout out, and that's all I want. I want you to go ahead and just so it doesn't move. So when we go to sew this on, they don't like shift apart. Just like that. And that's perfect. This gives me a chance to go blow my nose. I'll be right back. I'm gonna just give you a little, a little idea of what we're gonna do next. So, let me put these away so I don't get everything all mixed up. After you do that, so we just did the heat up the iron. Um, we're gonna grab your top, we're gonna to grab your top pieces. And when I say the top, I mean, and I'm so sorry about that error, but this is gonna be my um, top of the bag, right? You wanna grab your batting. This is the lining. Here's my batting. And this is the very top of the bag. So it looks, should look something like that. So I want you to go ahead and grab those pieces and your zipper. This is what we're gonna be doing next. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready, ready to move on so I can get a general idea. Margaret, you ready? I'm not, Miss Kathy Ruscha, you're ready. How about you, Debbie? You're good? Miss Joyce, you watching? Okay. How about you, Stephanie? You look like you're sitting down and you're almost ready. Yeah, does the batting go behind the lining or the We're front? We're not even gonna put the batting down yet, but this is what I want you to have just pulled to the side. I want you to have your top piece. This is the top front. This is going to be the batting, and then you have your lining and your zipper. And we're going to take our time. We're going to do this all together. Miss Irene, how are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm just trying to line up those three things. Oh, don't even worry about lining them up. Don't oh, get them okay. lined up. We're going to separate them. Just okay. I want you to pull them to the side. Paula, you ready? Almost. So the this top piece... We need to cut off where it shows the zipper. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Um, it looks like your top piece doesn't have the zipper picture on it anymore. So I need to trim that real quick. It doesn't. Quick. We cut that off. Okay, I'll do that. We cut fast. that off. We trimmed, we trimmed. This part is the part with the zipper. The part with the line is going to be the outside. And when we trimmed, we trimmed a quarter of an inch right there, and then we snugged it in about a 16th of an inch. So okay. we moved our ruler, we put the quarter inch on that, and then we moved it in about a 16th of an inch. Okay. And then we cut it. And we did that to this part, and we did it to, um, where is it? This was the, this is gonna be the other part, or whichever part you're using. I'm just getting it on this part, I'm good. Whoops, there goes my zipper. I didn't see the part um, to cut the batting. I must have missed that in the instructions. Uh, what size do I cut it to? Do I cut it cut exactly? You're batting like 11 inches by three and a half inches. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Who was that? Jeannie, this is Chicky. <laughs> oh, Chicky. Okay. On yes, the top, I, I didn't um, cut it an eighth of an inch on one of my sides uh, where the zipper is going to connect, I guess, on the top front. Is that going to be a problem? Okay. So this was, um, this was Not, a, before I cut off the zipper. It was okay. like this. Okay, mine. And the zipper, the like picture of the zipper was right in here. So okay, you were I, supposed to have this top piece and we cut an eighth of an inch. This is the bottom where it connected. We cut right on that line. Okay, I did it cut right. Eighth of an inch all the way around the outside. The zipper, the picture of the zipper was right here. Okay, and we I, just cut it a quarter of an inch from where the design started but we snugged it over about a 16th of an inch. And then okay. we did the same thing on this side, quarter of an okay. inch, and we snugged it over a little bit. You good? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. And you know what? It's all gonna work. Don't worry, if, it, if you didn't get it perfectly like we said, you're gonna make it work and it's gonna be gorgeous and nobody's gonna know. I have to tell you, I really <laughs> like your walking foot. Mine is like mm -hmm. archaic. Oh my God, the walking foot is the best. Okay. I want you to take your zipper and this, I want everyone to do this with us. We'll go a little faster with the second one. This one will kind of take our time. So here's our zipper with our zipper pull. I want you to take your zipper pulls and I want you to pull them all the way to the right. We are gonna start with, and I'm gonna move this. We're doing this later. I want you to grab your top lining piece. So here's my top lining piece. It sh your piece should be 11 by three and a half inches. Unless you followed your instructor and you prepped way beforehand and you cut it 11 by two and a half inches, which was wrong. <laughs> that was me, I'm so sorry. But 11 by three and a half inches. If you have the 11 by two and a half, we're gonna be able to make that work too. Okay, right side up. I want this piece right side up. You are gonna take your zipper and I want you to center it to this piece, meaning don't have it too far this way and don't have it too far this way. You want it right in the center and you wanna line up these edges. This is what we're starting with. We're not doing the batting, we're not doing this, not quite yet, but this is gonna go on soon. And is the this zipper is what I right want. side up? What was that? I'm sorry, zipper right side up? We're zipper right side up, but okay. with your zipper pull all the way to the right. Eyes on me. What and I your want material, you to do. Your materials, right, your material is right side up. My and your material is right side up too. Fabric, okay. this is the lining. Lining right yep. side up, zipper right side up, zipper pull all the way down here to the bottom. We mm -hmm. are gonna start sewing right here with a quarter of an inch and we're gonna sew about half an inch in. Just to eyeball it, about half an inch in. Where do we get the lining? Ooh, I didn't get that. You should have had your lining cut. So go ahead and cut a piece of lining fabric right now. So, um, and I think that, that was on your supply list. So cut your lining piece right now, three and a half inches by 11 inches. All right, I'm gonna start sewing in my zipper fabric. And I'm gonna sew to half an inch. Don't sew the whole thing on right now. You're gonna sew quarter inch seam allowance, about half an inch into your lining fabric. So right there, I'm about half an inch in. Just like that and stop. And I put this in your instructions. So what did I put here? Let me make sure I had it right. Put top batting to the side, take the top lining right side up and zipper right side up centered to the long edge of the lining, both right side up and zipper pull, pull to the bottom. Sew the zipper to the lining using a quarter inch seam allowance, about half an inch. Then add the top front outer right side down and finish sewing down the long edge. You can pin if you want. I'm not gonna pin, but this is, oh, and this is important. The way we put this down is important. This dashed edge is the outline. Okay, that's your outline. Right. This part right here that doesn't have the dash line, that is the part that we're gonna line up over here. 
right to the zipper, okay? And you wanna make sure that you are sewing inside of the white so you don't see the white. When we're done, this here is gonna be sewn down and flipped back. It'll look like this, except nicer because I didn't fold it right where I was supposed to. So make sure you're not, make sure you're not lining this edge up here with the dash line. It should be the side that doesn't have the dash line. So once you've sewn in half an inch, you're gonna line this up, put it right to the, right to the um, needle and just go slow. Line up all three edges, the lining, oh. the zipper and the top piece. Oh, Jeez. I did it wrong. That's okay, take it off and uh, take it out. We're doing this nice and slow. Jeannie, okay. I, have a I have a question too, Jeannie. This is yeah. Margaret. Um, so I'm having trouble because the zipper pulls are keeping the digital dual feed from going down. Can I? Your and... zipper pulls should be all the way at the bottom. Oh, okay. I put them on the wrong way. I guess I, okay. That's what Do I you need. Have right side up. Just, yeah. just hit, your cut, hit your cut button and this, just take it out and take your zippers from the top and pull them all the way down to the bottom. They should okay. be at the bottom. Okay, great. Thanks. Hey, I'm almost I, there. I have a question for you on this yeah. um, top top piece. Are we lining the dotted line with our background or we're just lining it up evenly? The dotted line, we're not even thinking about that. That's just like the outline. You At are sewing. To, oh, this should be centered. So see, I have about a little bit, like once you sew it down, uh -oh. it's going to look like this. Okay, so this is- You should have a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Okay, thank you. But you wanna sew into it a little bit just to get everything in place. I'm gonna do one more stitch, okay? Then we're putting this down and make sure I'm folding it back. Make sure the dotted line is on the left, the solid line is on the right. And you wanna make sure that your stitch is just to the left of that solid line, just to the left over here. So I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna sew it all down. If you, if it's not heated up, I want you to heat up your iron because we're gonna be pressing next. All right. And I'm just sewing at 2.5. And as I go, I'm just gonna make sure everything is lined up. Edge of my zipper, edge of my lining, edge of the top fabric. I wouldn't pin this, but if you wanted, you could wonder clip it. I don't even think you need that though. Just go ahead, take your time, lift up, lift it up. Make sure that's lined up. Make sure this is lined up. I'm gonna put all of that down. I'm gonna put this down on top. Quarter of an inch, your quarter of an inch should be going just to the inside. You don't want to see any of that white when we flip it. And the zipper should be out of the way. That should like not be an issue at all. It should be down at the bottom. So right through, through all the layers, past the zipper, go ahead and cut. And it should look like that. Lining, zipper right side up, top piece right side down, and we're gonna press. How'd we do? We ready, ladies? You know, I did, <laughs> I did, I was like, I gotta be on top of my game for the ladies and the gents today. Um, and so I, uh, I did a sample and of course I sewed, <laughs> I sewed it on wrong. I was like, oh, good thing I'm practicing. These poor, poor people, they'd have like a horrible instructor. Oh my God, why won't this stay? Okay, we are gonna press. Let's go to our iron ladies. And gents, I don't know, I thought Mike was going to be here. I want you to do the lining side first. So I want you to take your lining, fold it back, and I want you to finger press. Fold it back and finger press, and then grab your iron and give it a little press, okay? Okay. Um, Jenny. Yes. <clears throat> um, I'm looking at what you're doing, and I'm following you. 
But where did you get that top piece from? Is that in the panel? Or did I this miss something? The, yeah, this was the panel. This was like before I cut the panel. I'm going to show okay. you this one. Yeah, this is a big one. But top piece. I got that. Front, bottom, and uh -huh. back. Okay. I'm and then I just added lining. You have to like, that's your secret ingredient, whatever lining you want to add. Okay, gotcha. Got, okay, I so got that you. wasn't The lining wasn't included in the panel. I got so you. I want you to finger press. And you know me, I'm aggressive. So I finger nail press. And I want you to just give that a little press. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Then we're going to do the front part. So now we're going to go ahead and flip it. Fold this back. I want you to give it a finger press first. And then you're going to press it. Your zipper pull should be to the left. This should be right side up. Lining should be, you know, when you fold it back like this, the lining should show. If you did it wrong, get your seam ripper out. And now we're going to top stitch. I'm going to use my quarter inch foot to top stitch. So this is what it should look like. Gorgeous, right? Grab your line, your batting. I'm going back to my machine. Just a minute, I had to unpick. <laughs> hey, can you can you hold up for just a minute, Jamie? For yeah. whatever reason, my quarter inch isn't doing a quarter inch midway through. Are you uh, are you set to stitch 103? Jeannie. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I am. The issue for me is the foot is riding on the teeth and pushing the seam over. That's that's what I think is wrong with me too. I had to go over it like four times. Because uh, I just did it like this, right? So is or not. So you're saying <laughs> that the teeth, the foot is riding on the teeth and pushing. I didn't have any issues. It just went right like this. Are you saying it pushed it left or right? Yes. Okay, here's the ball. Laugh. You're the boss. Jeannie. I want you to just hold that fabric and control it because I didn't have any issues with that. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, Jeannie. Hear, yes. It's Debbie. Are we supposed to have the, the batting or just the lining and the top piece? We're going to snug the batting in right now. So you should have the so, batting ready to go. But we, when we sew it, we sew it without the bat batting first. Yes. You weren't supposed, you were just supposed to do it just like I did it. Which is supposed, your lining, your lining, which was lining your top piece. It was lining, <laughs> zipper, top piece. That's it. No batting yet. So um, I don't know what to tell you if you're having the, uh, you're feeling like it's pushing over. I need you to control your fabric and um, just hold it in place. If you're holding it in place, it shouldn't have gone anywhere. It should have been fine. If you need to un rip it out, restitch it, go ahead and do that right now. It helped with me using the clips instead of just trying to hold the fabric. So Debbie, wonder so if you clips. have clips. Yeah. So if you want a wonder clip, go ahead and wonder clip. But um. Part of it might be uh, like if you were just kind of letting it feed, I was holding it and just like this. I was holding it and making sure nothing was kicking out going left to right. And ladies, if you do fall behind, you're gonna have the video recording and we're gonna do another one of these. We're gonna do the large size. Once you're pressed, this is what it's going to look like. I want you to take your batting. You have a right and a wrong side on your batting. So the right side is the smoother side. And the wrong side is the one that has more like the, it's bumpier. So um, if you put it down wrong, sometimes you get bearding with little pieces of batting coming through. So just put the smooth side up where it's Thank dimpled you. in and not the side where it's dimpled out. So I'm yeah, just going to go I'm ahead. I think I'm behind a step. Did you? So I ironed the top back. Now yep. do I iron the lining back? First, you iron the lining, finger press, and then iron. 
And then you take the front piece, finger press and iron. Okay, we are gonna snug in our batting. So I want you to have it like this with your uh, pretty piece facing up, your top of your bag. You're gonna take your batting, make sure you have at least one edge that's gonna be totally straight. And you are gonna snug it in right to that stitch line. So I'm gonna go right here to right here. Can look at it from the side if I need to. You're gonna go ahead and pull the top down. And I am gonna top stitch. This is how I'm gonna do it with my quarter inch foot on. I don't know what the setting is gonna be if you're using just a regular quarter inch foot, but if I were to top stitch right now, I'm gonna be a quarter inch in. I'm gonna take my needle drop and I'm gonna move it all the way to seven. So over here is zero. And as you move it to the right, it goes to seven, that's seven millimeters, that's on my machine. You can just eyeball it and top stitch however you want. But on my machine, I have an LR shift. You might be moving it with your width. I'm gonna hit my plus button and you're gonna see my needle moving to the right and I'm gonna move it all the way to seven. You don't now, have to do your, this. Are your zippers at the top now, your zipper pulls? Yes, my zipper pulls are at the top. Okay, mine's just making a clicking noise when I'm trying to move the shift. So what am I doing wrong? Um, it's making a clicking and the needle's not moving. Yes. Oh, you know what? what? So depending on your quarter inch foot, if you have a traditional quarter inch foot, it might not let you move it because the hole is so small. Does no, that make it's a sense? big, it's a big hole. It just looks just like yours. And it won't move to the right. I well, do, not do I need to have the fabric under it to do that? No. No, I can move my needle drop any way I want without the needle under it or with the needle under it. Yeah, it's just you might, be, you might be set up with, uh, are you in quilting? Are you in your quilt folder? Yes, I'm on okay. 01. Is you're that what you're in Q01? Yes. Q01 is assuming that you might have your straight stitch needle plate on. It's not gonna let you move your okay. needle drop. So go to folder number one, if you're on a baby lock or a brother, do stitch okay. 103. Before you start sewing, hand roll your needle if you have a just one hole, because you might not be able to move your needle left or right. Okay. No, it's if a big, you, it's big plate. It's okay. the plate with the large So hole. for me, I have a big hole in yes. my foot. Yes. So I can move it all the way to seven. If okay. you have a traditional quarter inch foot that just has a tiny hole, you're not going to be able to do this. Change your foot out. Put a different foot on, put your regular J foot on. I got, I did what you said. I went to one and then oh, uh, 103. Now yes. it moved. Now, if you have just this foot on, which is fine, yes. you can top stitch. And I would just put your needle centered because there's your center mark right there right. on your foot. And just make sure you snug it over about an eighth of an inch and just go ahead and top stitch. I'm okay. going to leave my walking foot on. I move okay. my needle position to 0 0.7 or to okay. 7. And now I'm just going to use that as a guide. And I'm just going to sew. I'm just top stitching. And I'll have a perfect top stitch for my flange. So I don't okay. have to have to really eyeball. I'm just using my flange as my guide. OK. Does anyone have a different foot and you have questions and you want me to help you walk? You want me to walk you through it? Okay, why are you not moving? Jeannie, this is Stephanie. Now I have this gorgeous top stitch and it's perfectly spaced and I used my quarter inch to do that and just moved my needle position. Yes, Sally. Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. <laughs> um, my uh, free motion foot doesn't say 0 0.7. I don't know where you're seeing that. Your free motion foot. Do you have your quarter yes, inch it, foot? It, yep, I got that on. Okay. Are you using stitch 103? Yes. Right down here on the bottom, LR shift. So if I'm center, I'm just gonna touch it. I'm at 3.5. That's just center needle position. But I wanna use my quarter inch foot at, with the guide. So I just hit the plus button until it went to seven. 
Oh, okay. Because you kept pointing at the foot and I thought there was numbers on the foot. Nope. No, just right here. So you don't have to use your quarter inch to just quarter inch. You could use the, the just the flange on it as a guide to do other things. Nice. Came out nice. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. We are going to go ahead and we're going to put the other side on. Okay. Here we go, ladies. Same thing that we did at the same thing that we did before. I want you to grab your lining piece first. So my lining piece is. This is my lining piece. I'm using all different color fabrics. Ooh, pretty. I'm going to take my batting. I'm going to get rid of it. I just have all these fat quarters that I didn't finish. So I like to use them for things like this. Okay. I'm going to take this right side up. You should have it long and skinny. It should be like this, tall. We're going to take the zipper. And we're going to... I'm going to take my zipper pull and let's pull them. Are we going to pull them down that way? We can just uh, take the zipper and put it on this way. So, uh, oh, actually, we need the zipper right side up. Zipper right side up. Sorry, ladies. It's okay. Okay. Zipper's right side up. I'm going to take my zipper pulls and I'm going to pull them all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Lining right side up. Zipper right side up with pulls all the way to the bottom. And you want to line the lining up with your other lining piece. You know what I mean? So that those are even. They don't have to be perfectly even because it's the lining. We're going to be trimming that all down. But it should look like this. Wait, I'm lost. <clears throat> okay. Lining piece right side up. Okay. Zipper right side up with pull all the way down to the bottom. This is your right side with pull. Okay. You're going to put your zipper on top of your lining with the edge lined up. And then this is going to be lined up with your other lining piece. Oh, that so looks lined up. Okay. I thought okay. you lined it up at the top. Okay. No, nope, not at the top. We're going to sew. We're going to sew starting here in your zipper and sew about half an inch. And then we're going to add this top piece. All right, so you're just sewing this right now. Lining to the zipper. Lining to the zipper. Go ahead and set your needle position back. I'm set at seven. That's gonna be wrong. I'm just gonna touch this and it'll go to default. I wanna be. Whoop. What did you touch? 3.5. I just touched the stitch again, 1.03. Mm -hmm. And it'll take me back to my default. If oh. you leave it at seven, it's gonna sew it too far over to the right. You want a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, ladies. We want a quarter inch. Ladies and gents, I'm gonna just start in the zipper above and I'm gonna sew, whoops. I'm hitting my, uh, I was hitting my cut foot. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have your dual feet set up and if you ever do that, but I'm gonna go right about here. And now we're gonna put your top piece on. Where's my gorgeous top? Let me find it. If, if there's a way to lose it, I will lose it. Oh, here it is. So mine's the acorns. Whatever top you're using. All right. Remember, we have the, let's look at this because you want to put the right edge on there. This is the outline edge. This is the very bottom that we cut. That was our first cut. You want to be putting this edge on. The edge that's a quarter inch where you nudged it down the tiniest bit, that's where we're putting it down. And you want to make sure this edge is lined up with this edge, that everything is lined up together. So if you have to kind of look at it, look at it. So I'm going to pull it back. This is what you should see the edge that you trimmed back a quarter of an inch and then like a 16th inch more. Do we have it? All right, you're gonna, what was that? I said, we're working on it. <laughs> All right, this over here on the left should be the cut edge where it was, uh, where it was um, front to back. 
And then you should have this where it's an eighth of an inch. And this edge right here, that should be the edge that we trimmed where the, it had the picture of the zipper. And this, I'm gonna fold it back this way. This should be lined up. This should be even. This edge is even with this edge. Okay, mine looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and sew it. If you feel like you need wonder clips, go ahead and wonder clip it. Remember, you're the boss, so don't let it kick out to the side. Just hold it in place, it should go. I'm just lining mine up. Zipper edge lined with the lining and then the top. Make sure your iron's heated up. We're gonna go ahead and snug in that batting piece next. And make sure when you fold it back, none of the white is showing from the center. You should have trimmed enough where that shouldn't be sticking out. I felt mine snug out like just then, it kick out a little bit. So make sure you just hold it in place. If you hold it in place, it won't move. And if you have to go over that stitch again, you can go over that stitch again. We're gonna fold it back. We're gonna make sure this is lined up and this side's lined up. And you wanna make sure that none of the white is showing here. I put the and we're gonna go on. press. What was that? I have to chair out. I put the lining upside down. Story of my life, right? So the lining should have been facing right side up. Yeah. Zipper right side up with edges well, one of them's lines. wrong. What's wrong? One of them's wrong then. I don't know which okay. one. Okay, do you have lining right side up? Yes, I do on one side. On the other side, I don't. <laughs> the side we already did. I'll just leave it like that, I don't care. Okay, yeah, because we're gonna have to move on. And if you don't get it this one, we're gonna do another one. Let's go ahead and press, ladies. Whoop. I want you to do your lining side first, hold it back, finger press and then press with your iron. Okay, lining first. Now we're gonna do front side. Hold this back or to the right or down or whichever way you wanna call it. Finger press. Make sure none of that white is showing. If it is, it's up to you, but I would restitch it. Finger press it, and then you're gonna give it a little press with your iron. If you're way off, like these should be lined up, these edges. If one is way too high or way too low, you could leave it, cause then you could just sew in a little bit more. You know, it doesn't have to be like perfect. But I'm just gonna go ahead and finger press it, press it. <clears throat> All right, and that's what you should have. We're gonna be doing the quilting. No top stitching? Oh, yeah, yeah. Top stitch. Let's top <laughs> stitch first. Thank you. That's why I depend on you, ladies. Because my brain only works half the time. Okay, for me, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to just go ahead and use the same foot, same stitch 103, except I'm going to use my LR shift, and I'm just going to go all the way to a seven. Some, some of you have the width that you can move, but on the Luminaire and Solaris, it doesn't let you do that. You have to do the LR shift. And you can see my needle is no longer center because that's where my center is. And now it's gonna give me that perfect top stitching. <clears throat> oh, what about the batting? Snug in your batting. Yep, did that. All right. Flip this back, snug in the batting, and then do your top stitching. Make sure you have a nice straight edge. Oh my God, Patrick has been doing all the puppy duty. 
because I've been, <laughs> and then Patrick let me sleep in the other room and I was like, oh my God, he's being so nice. And then he said something about not wanting to catch my cold. And I thought, he's actually kicking me out of the room. <laughs> And uh, about how I'm like, get out of here. Well, I thought you were being so nice, and I was like, oh, he's so sweet. And then I realized that you were just no, I was being kicking like, me out of the room too. You to sleep later. He was, and, and it's helping me. Sleep. All right, ready? Hey, can I Top stitch. Really yep. Um, can we stack the? Um, can we stack the tables behind the cutting table? Yeah, I don't care where they go. Wherever, babe. <clears throat> oh my goodness, that top stitching is so incredible. Yeah, and it's dude. so perfectly placed. And that flange is so amazing too. I'm a flange girl. I know Michelle always talks about how she doesn't like the flange. Um, and I know there's some of you that don't, so you can always use your J foot to do your, uh, you know, if you do your J foot and you do, I forget what stitch it is. It's a quarter inch from here to the edge, which is amazing too. Any questions? How are we ladies? You look great. Okay, we're gonna quilt. Now you have options, right? You have your quilt bar set up. So if you want, you could like for me, I could go ahead and I could put this down and I could use this as a guide and I could run it on the stitch that I just did. And then I'd have my quilting and my eye would stay right here on my quilt bar, just making sure that it stayed down in that stitch, give me that perfectly spaced stitching. Okay. So if you want, go ahead and quilt bar it. I'm going to put my other one in here. Let's see. Let me grab. Of course, I've lost it instantly. I'm looking for the. <clears throat> I'm looking for the one that we were sticking into the walking foot. Where are you? I can't find it, ladies. So, but I, you get the gist, right? We're gonna quilt this. You can do whatever you want. If you wanted, we could go ahead and I could keep this on these. You know, I could eyeball and keep it. Well, that doesn't really work, does it? So with this, you could draw a line, stitch that line, and then you quilt bar. Your quilt bar, you just need a point of reference. You need something that you're gonna line it up with. I'm gonna do serpentine. So, um, and I'm just gonna serpentine this whole thing. I'm gonna serpentine the other part. You could do whatever you want, depending on your panel. Like this one. This one, I just used the lines that were already in the fabric and I just sewed without the quilt bar. This one right here, I just did a little bit inside of the square. And then on the back here, here. You, go ahead. No? Okay, on the back here, I literally, I think I drew a line here and across and I sewed those lines and then I quilt barred, or I didn't quilt bar, I used the guides on my machine, which I'm gonna show you right now. Um, where's the other bags I did? This one. Can you this one I just serpentine. Can what you do that? the serpentine with the quarter inch foot down? No, we're going to change the foot out. And I'm okay. going to change my foot out. But this one I did serpentine and I did make it a little bit longer. So we'll go ahead and do that. This one I did echo quilting. So I echo quilted around the design. And then I did straight line quilting on the top. And I use the lines of the pattern. So I'm gonna give you, we'll just take our time. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and serpentine mine. But if you picked a pretty design, like let's say this one here, this one doesn't have any like lines on it. So I'll probably serpentine or do straight line quilting. This one here has, this one for me, I think I would just, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and like, not free motion, but I will use my regular foot, decrease my foot pressure and echo quilt around it. This has defined lines. So to me, I would just go ahead and like, just stitch on those lines, maybe do every two of them. So based on your pattern, like I did this one uh, last night and I just did serpentine. This is what it looks like if you leave it. And then when I did the bottom part, I elongated it, okay? So let's go ahead. Go ahead and use your quilt bar if you want. 
I just turned it like this. Let's go ahead. Uh, if you want to do serpentine, that's what I'm going to set up for right now. First of all, you need to know where to find your serpentine. On my machine, it's going to be in folder number two, and it's stitch 219. So let's see if you can find mm -hmm. it. You want to, what was that? I'm trying to find it on my genome. That's all. You're on your genome. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I think, do you have all your stitches on your lid on the genome? Oh, I do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and look at the lid. Go to whichever mode you need to. Okay. Maybe do a test. So grab a piece of scrap and just do a little stitch to see if you like it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do 219. You know what's great about this machine? I can project your stitch. Annetta, you're getting a little bit of a demo. So if you're on a Luminara Solaris, you have this button right here. That is gonna let you project your stitch. Ooh, look, there's my projected stitch. I'm taking off my quarter inch. I'm gonna put on my uh, open, uh, my, yeah, my open toe. Here's my open toe. Use an open toe when you want to be able to see your stitches. And I have a special upgrade on my machine that gives me a disco rainbow strobe. I'm just kidding, ladies. <laughs> this is, uh, this is um, when, you, when we film, it just, I don't know why, you're just going to see that disco strobe. That's just from the camera and the, I don't know why it happens. That to me is way too skinny. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make mine longer. So... I don't have my stylus. Where's my stylus? Let me see if it's up there. Where? Oh, you know what? It was sitting right on top of the machine. If you've never used this before, this is fantastic. And Annette, I'm giving you a little bit of a demo and some of the features that make the Luminaire and Solaris so great. On the bed of your machine, you can adjust your stitches right here. So if I wanna make it wider, and that shows you this, where the stitch is getting wider and the stitch length longer, I want my stitch length to be a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna put my pen here right on the plus and it's gonna adjust the length. I like that. To me, that's the serpentine I want. It's projected on there. I like where it's going. I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch. So I don't like how far I am. So I would go ahead and I can just take my quilt bar and maybe I'll put it in a little bit further. And I like that. And so that's where I would go ahead and stitch, okay? Just using my quilt bar, go ahead and stitch it up and then I can move it over. Ladies, so go ahead, I want you to start quilting. If all you have is the quilt bar, which is fantastic, use it. It's such an easy tool and it does just gives you beautiful um, parallel rows of stitching. If you're on a Luminara Solaris, we're gonna turn our guideline markers on. <laughs> and this is how you do it. This button right here is your guideline markers. Go ahead and touch that. This is gonna come up. We're gonna go into the subs and the sub is where all the fun stuff happens. So I want you to go ahead and touch your sub. Make sure it says guidelines on, hit sub. And this is gonna be seam allowance. This is gonna be your grid lines and that's gonna be angles. We want grid lines. Go ahead and touch that. Oh, and on. look at that. Now I have my grid lines projected down onto the bed of my machine. That's a little too far for me. Like I don't wanna do my, my things that far apart. So right now my grid lines are at an inch. I'm just gonna take those grid lines down. So you're gonna be able to see them getting smaller. Zini, how did, what did you touch to, to bring up the panel that had guidelines on it? You're gonna to touch this first. Those are your okay. guidelines. Okay. Then it'll automatically bring to you to the main screen for your guidelines. We're right. gonna go into sub. And I always okay. tell people sub is where all the fun stuff happens. Then you're gonna touch your grid lines and you can choose the color. If you feel like you can see the green better, choose the green. I usually use the red. So I'm gonna use the red. And now I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna look at this. And I am changing the side. So here we can make the distance between our grid lines bigger if I hit plus. 
or we can make them smaller. I'm going to use the minus. I'm going to be holding that down and just looking here until I like how the distance is away. I'm going to do two of them here. So I'm going to do one here and one here. Actually, maybe I'll do them an inch. What was the inch? I think the inch was what, 24 or something? Looks right. Okay, 25.4 is an inch. So <clears throat> I want to do, actually, if I do um, my right now, if I put my grid line right on that seam here, then I'm going to have one right here, and then I'll do another one over here. So just like whatever makes sense to your brain, because I'm at a center stitch. There's my serpentine. My grid line is going to be right here. That's exactly where I want it. And then my other one's going to be here. It's kind of in the middle of my two grid lines. So I'm going to just go ahead and sew. My eye is going to start, my eye is looking right here at this red line being on my top stitching. And I have a question yes. on that. Um, yes. So I can see on the first sew line, you're going to follow that little top stitch line with your grid line. When you move to the next one, is your grid line going to be on that wavy stitch or how do you then, maybe you'll show that when you get yeah, to that. Yeah, I'm going to figure it out. It might be on the yeah. wavy stitch. Okay, It'll I'll just probably be on the wavy stitch. Right now, I'm just leaving my grid line right on that seam. And yeah. I just kind of make it up as I go. I go, where's my grid line? Okay, does it make sense for me to put it down? Where does it make sense for me to put it down? Okay, I'll just watch how you do the next row. Okay, so I just did that one. I'm just going to take my grid line. Oh, you know what? It's too close. I'm going to take the grid line and uh, maybe I should have made it. But so did you see right here? So I moved my grid line here. It was here. And now I'm going to move it down to here. My other grid lines right on that seam now. And then my stitch is going to be right here. Oh, I see. So it. I did Second. grid line on there and stitch next to it. And then I just move this one over to the next grid line it would go on. So it moved it an inch away. And now I'm going to stitch again. Okay, I see. And just look where your stitch is going to be. Needs to make sense. I think I, I'll do a smaller grid lines for this because sometimes I'll add my grid lines up. My eye is staying right here. So I was, um, now I'm like two grid lines away from where I'm stitching. And I'm just looking right over here. I'm at inches. I have my grid lines at an inch. So there, parallel rows of stitching without having to mark everything. Or you could use your quilt bar. I'm going to go ahead and turn this. And same thing. I'm going to put this grid line here. And then once I'm done with that, I'll move it over and I'll put the grid line here. And then I'll move it over. And so we'll just keep moving it down. You, could, you might have to flip your fabric over this way. I'm going to move this out of the way. So that's not confusing. And let's go ahead, smooth your fabric and your back, your lining. Make sure it's all smooth. Make sure you're not gonna have any bubbles in there. Um, there we go. Go ahead and quilt. Use your quilt bar, use your grid lines, whatever works for you, eyeball. You can free motion it. You could do clear blue tiles with your embroidery machine. I'm not back stitching or anything. I'm just keeping one of my grid lines over here on that line. Jeannie, what is your eye following? Because I'm confused. Do you see my grid line right here? I'm putting yeah. it on the top stitching. So I'm an inch away. And then I moved it down again. Or you could just have your grid line run to write down your serpentine if you wanted. Uh, it, can, it can follow whatever you want it to follow. So I'm an inch apart from these. So see how my grid lines are like right down the center of those? If you want, you could just move your grid line over and just have it go down the center of your serpentine. Because now I'm too far from this. So I was here and I did my first set. 
I was right here on my grid line and I sewed my serpentine. And then I moved this over to my next grid line right here. And I did my next serpentine, but guess what? I don't like, I'm now I'm out of view. So you can, you can have it follow whatever you want it to follow. So now I'm just gonna take my grid line and I'm gonna just make sure it goes down the middle of my serpentine. That's all. Okay. That seems easier. Yes. So now here's my grid line. I'm just gonna make sure it goes down the center of my serpentine. Wait, that's not right, is it? Hang on. My grid line was here and then I sewed and then I moved my grid line, my first grid line. That's gonna be too far over here. I need to go, my grid lines are in between. I'm gonna quote bar <laughs> to make sure he's in the right spot. Where's my grid line? Okay, here, that's gonna go down the center and then it should be right. Is that right? This one to this one. Okay, I'm choosing this edge. I'm gonna write it down the, the peaks. Sorry. Whoops. Huh. I guess you just do whatever makes sense for your brain. I'm gonna put this down. Um, and let's, uh, you know, for the next one, let's make our grid line smaller. Cause I think I did mine a little bit smaller when I did my sample. For help with the regalia, like who's here and is it? So, you oh, Mary Beth Laguna, yeah. go ahead. Whoops, you, you're basically not using the grid lines. You know what? All right, now I'm just using my quilt bar because I right. kind of ran out of that space. Although I could go ahead and flip it, and then um, I'm going to make my grid line smaller for the next one. But yeah, I am using my quilt bar right now. Because my grid lines, I don't want to confuse you too. My grid lines would have to go center. Like they weren't, you know what I mean? Because my, my, my top stitching went out of view. And so um, for it to make sense, let me look at it. Can I call her or something? Okay. Hang on a second. So this was kind of in the center for my next one. My grid line would have to be like a quarter inch to the right. So, I mean, I could just do this and eyeball, but it wasn't as precise as me just taking my quilt bar and just having it go to the peaks. So, I'm gonna make them a little smaller for the next one when we do the back. So you could basically turn off your grid lines. I could turn them off right now if I wanted. Yeah, because I'm not really using them the second. I'm gonna leave mine on because we're gonna go ahead and quilt the back. I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller and use them for the uh, other part of my fabric. Okay. Before, we, before we're done with this, what I want you to do is I want you to take your zipper pull and I want you to put it in the center. And we are gonna stitch, you're not gonna stitch on the black line. We're gonna stitch an a eighth of an inch inside all the way around. So don't stitch here on the black line, the stitch inside. 
And then we're going to be done with this. Here, I'll turn off my guideline right now just so they're not going to be distracting. And just go ahead and stitch on the, whoops, get off your serpentine. I'm going back to stitch 103. There we go. And just stitch right inside, right to the left of that dash line. Could be a 16th of an inch. We're gonna be cutting that dash line. I have my auto pivot on, so it's automatically lifting the foot for me. You're just securing hey, your fabric Katie, down. It's Debbie, are we supposed to be sewing all the way around? Yep, that's what we're doing right now. Okay, and, and the zipper pulls, are they both supposed to be in the middle or just in one? In the middle. Both you in the middle. You need to pull them to the middle. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Inside the dash line. Go right over that zipper. Whoops. I have my foot control at home set up to uh, do one stitch because I'm the type that overshoots. So I just tapped on the heel of this foot control, but it, it was, uh, it's set up to go reverse. Okay, quilted, stitched around on the inside. You can trim it right on that red line. We're gonna go ahead and quilt the back of the fabric once you're done. So you're gonna grab your back fabric with the back lining. You're gonna make a little layer cake. You're gonna cut all of this right off. Make sure your zipper pulls in the middle. Should be in the middle and then we're gonna trim it all. And then grab your back fabric and we are gonna go ahead and quilt that. Jeannie, did you did you switch back to your quarter inch foot when you went back to sew all the way around? Nope. I just used my open toe and I just okay. eyeballed it. Okay, thanks. All right now. Um, the boxes that we put all the stuff on, um, do you want them in the just wherever. I don't care. I can just put them on top of the yep. stuff. Yep, whatever's the easiest. So Jeannie, were you cutting right on the dotted line or did you say just slightly outside? So you sewed slightly inside the dotted line and then you cut right on top okay. of the dotted line. I did sew on the inside of it. So, okay, Perfect. I'll cut on the line. Okay. Oh my goodness. How cute is that? Don't unzip. You just want to, we're going to unzip it a little bit so we can turn it right side out when we put the other part on. But this is what you should have right now. Your top should be quilted, zippers in, looks gorgeous. And now you're going to grab your back piece, which should be 11 inches by 11 inches. Here's mine. And now let me find my lining. Lining. Gorgeous. Here you are, you're beautiful. <clears throat> okay, with your lining. I guess it doesn't matter how you put it down. Doesn't matter. But you should have, I just had you like 16 inches. You should have about half an inch on either side. Batting should be about half an inch bigger. Just smooth it down. And you're gonna use whatever technique you want to go ahead and quilt this. I'm gonna put my quilt bar back. I mean, my grid lines back on. Excuse me, yeah. Jeannie, is that your lining or is that your, um, oh no, Here's that's my lining. Fabric. This is my okay. lining, 16 okay. inches, or no, 11 by 11. Uh -huh. My batting, 11 by 11. And okay. then this is the back of the bag. And that's face uh, right side up. Yes, and that was from the panel. Okay. So when we're done, we're going to sew these parts together. This is going to be the part that goes on and it's going to be a little bit longer. It's going to be a little bit longer on the bottom. Go ahead and quilt this any way you want.
any pattern you want, anything you want. I'm going to take my grid lines down. I can't remember what I used when I did these before. I'm going to put that up. I'm going to serpentine. I'm going back to my serpentine, which is 219. And I'm just going to go ahead and let's see. I'll serpentine here. And then I'm just gonna go make it go through the center. Oh, you know what? I need to make my stitch length longer. I think I was doing 1.8. You know what I think was confusing me? I was projecting the stitch too. So I have the projected stitch off. So Jeannie, I'm yep. I mean, the front, um, do I trim it right on the black lines? Right on the black line. All right, thank you. I'm sorry, right on the black line. I didn't get that. Right on the black line. You're sewing on the inside of the black line. You're trimming right on the black line. So now I'm just going to go ahead. And I'm going to move this over. I'm doing two at a time. Whoops, I did not want that. Okay. So I just moved over to, like here's one line, here's one line. I'm just having it go right down my serpentine. I turned off my projected stitch. I think that's what was confusing me. So I'm using my grid lines, but no projected stitch. I made my stitch length 1.8. I'm going to take this and move it over. So I am like, this is on. And I went down um, on my grid lines. I'm at 19.5 millimeters. Let me get that out of the way. Gonna go here and here. I'm at, like I said, I'm at 19.5 millimeters and I am, uh, I'm going two lines over at a time. I'm just keeping my eye on this one and I'm making sure it's going right down the center of my serpentine. Here's my first line. I'm going to move it over to my second line. And just quilt it. You could do just straight line quilting. I like straight line quilting. It looks kind of modern. We are almost done. Once you've done your quilting on this, same thing, you're going to you're going to sew around the entire piece about a, an eighth of an inch inside of the dash line and then you will trim on the dash line. On this uh, backing piece, when you said sew on the inside, um, there's really there's a top that doesn't have a dash line where the zipper go. Do we do we sew all four corners or all four uh, segments of the square? So you're going to sew around the entire thing about an eighth of an inch from the dash line. And are you talking about? I mean, I have a dash line on my whole thing, like this bottom part where the bottom was connected to the front. I think that's where I might have cut a little too close to the line because it doesn't make a difference. You're going to have extra, so just go okay. about go about an eighth of an inch in from that outline stitch. And if okay. you can't really see it on the bottom, that's fine. Just go an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay. 
Oh, ladies, you're doing great. So here's my line going through my serpentine. I'm moving it to the next one. So I'm like a line and a half or over. And I did mine at 19.5. And I just, I don't know, I just looked at my grid lines and that looked good to me. And I turned off my projected stitch. I think that's what, like I said, I think that's what confused me. Okay, I am gonna go turning off my grid lines. I'm gonna go back to a center straight stitch, folder one, stitch 103. And now I'm gonna sew on the inside of this dash line or the edge. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm still using my uh, open toe foot. And then I'm gonna trim right on that dash line. I'm almost at a bobbin thread. This is like one of those projects where I like to just use up whatever thread, because you know I'm not a thread purist. I'll just put in whatever bobbin thread. I'm just gonna pick something that is maybe cotton. And that last edge. And you're going around all four edges, correct? All four edges. Now I'm going to trim right on the dash line. And our back is ready. Our front is ready. We're going to go ahead and sew it all together. So if you haven't done it yet, you need to open up your zipper. Don't go right to the edges because you don't want it to get in the way, but you need to open up that zipper so you can turn it right side out. I'm cutting right on the black line now. I am going to finish this on my serger, but I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, sew it first, and then I'll finish the raw edges on my serger. So, you know what? I can't remember what it says in the instructions if she wanted you to do the sides first. That's the one thing I didn't write in my list. So you have the instructions here. And it says, um, sew around that entire bag using a quarter inch seam allowance, trim all edges of bag and excess zipper evenly, zigzag all edges of bag to prevent from strength, uh, um, fraying. So I can't remember if she wanted you to do here and then we do top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna do the sides first, but Jeannie. make sure, yes. What about the tab? Oh my goodness, thank you. Who said that? Thank yeah. you. Okay. Me. Before you hit the tab, did you trim the top just like you trimmed the bottom, the back? I trimmed the entire thing on the dash line. Okay. And I if there was no dash yet. line, because you're not going to have a dash line where we cut it here, then you're uh -huh. going to just sew a little bit in from that edge and trim right on that line again. Okay. I didn't trim. I, I have to sew all the way around. Hold on one second. Yeah. 
just go ahead. And so we are going to be putting this tab on. If you want to secure it in place, you're going to pick a spot. Just keep in mind, you're going to be sewing down about a quarter of an inch. So I wouldn't center it to this. Maybe just drop it down a little bit. You could just give it a little stitch just to keep it in place. So pick whatever tab you want. I am going to sew it down at about an eighth of an inch. Thank you so much for that reminder. Make sure your tab is facing inward and not outward. So we're going to go ahead and sew that down. Hold on, hold on. I'm almost there. Okay, it's okay. Just keep doing what you're doing. I like to like put my needle in so like not start here where it pushes it. And it doesn't matter if it's secured every like spot. You know what I mean? I'm just going to start with my needle in. Whoops. That's me pressing on the uh, cut foot control. So you're just going to tack that down. You don't have to tack it down, but you could just go ahead and tack it down. Yeah. Do you have a special way you want to set the chairs up or just set them up? Just in the rows. The rows. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. I would have forgotten the tab. And if you're there and you want to do it, unzip this about this far. Take your zipper pulls and I always fold them inward so they're not close to the edge. You're going to lay down right to right. This is the right side of my fabric. I mean, if you messed up and you put the lining out, that wouldn't make a difference either. It's pretty on both sides. I'm going to line it up so that I have a little bit of overhang on the bottom. And And this is directional fabric, right? The bottom, the back? Your bottom, may, it depends. It may be directional. So if it is directional, pay attention to that. It was, it was 11 by 11. So just make sure you're lined up on these sides and you're gonna have one part that's gonna be a little bit longer on the bottom. And she purposely made it that way. Now, if you wanna go ahead and wonder clip, you can wonder clip just to keep everything in place. I would sew these three sides first, and then you can sew the bottom up. However you wanna sew it up. Jeannie, on the bottom, so will we bring that overhang nope. up to match the bottom? Nope, it's gonna get cut right off. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thank it's you. gonna get cut off, so don't worry about it. Just have it overhang on the bottom. Hmm. Tomorrow, I'll have them getting all of that fabric in. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Cora. Okay. Go ahead and sew it all together if you want to start. Um, I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna do quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. And then as everything looks good, I'll come down here. I'll stop a quarter inch away and I'll go a quarter inch around. And then I'm gonna get on my serger. I'm gonna finish it all off. If you don't have a serger, you can just zigzag. Make sure this zipper is open so you can turn it right side out. Let me put my quarter inch sole back on.
Does the Solaris and Luminaire have an overcast stitch? Do you happen to know the number? Yeah, if you want to do the overcast stitch, you're going to do stitch 117. 117. And it's going to look like this. Oops. You're Oops. also going to put on your G foot to do that. Okay. So a G foot with stitch 117. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you still have your walking foot on? I still have my walking foot. Okay. I Thanks. use my walking foot probably 90% of the time. The only time I don't use my walking foot is if um, I am doing a stitch where it requires a special sole that doesn't fit on there. Whoops. What happened here? Sorry. Uh-oh. Let me go big. All right. Why is this falling? Hang on. Okay, here we go. Jeannie, did you come straight up off the bottom? I did, but okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna taper it in. So you have markings on this foot, or at least you know on your feet. This marking uh -huh. right here, that first red line, is gonna be a quarter inch. So when my fabric gets to that line right there, I'm gonna pivot. Okay. So I'm looking for this edge to be in line with that bottom red line. Once it gets there. Let me see what I got. And I'll turn. And if it doesn't fit right, but mine, mine turned perfectly. So I'm going to show in a quarter of an inch. Oh, okay. And I usually... Let me see. I don't think that's far enough. I'm going to do one more stitch. Whoops, that was too many. Let's go one stitch back. Perfect. I want to go to a quarter of an inch from the bottom of that top fabric, not the lining. There we go. And I'll pivot one more time at the bottom and I'm gonna back stitch. So this is where I sewed right on. I want one more stitch. Okay, and I'm gonna back stitch right here. And now I'm gonna take it to my serger. And then ladies, how are we doing on time? Oh, it's already 12.30. Okay. I don't even know if we have time to do the other one. We have a, um, I have a class that's gonna be starting. I think I could do the other one and kind of do it fast, but I am over here on my serger. Yep. Who would I reach out to at Dime about a heat problem? Uh, I don't think Sandy Griggs is there anymore. What's wrong? Um, the, the oh, that's like, um, I don't know, customer service. Okay, ladies, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up on the serger. I'm just threading it. If you've never seen uh, jet air threading on a serger, let me show you. So there's threading tubes right here. I'm just gonna pop this in. There's my upper looper. I'm gonna put about a half an inch of thread in there. I make sure I have enough thread that it can shoot out and prepare to be amazed. That is my upper looper right here. I'm just gonna hit the button and you're gonna see the thread shoot out. And there it is. And we're threaded. Let me go ahead and just do the two needles. Jeannie, now you have you, air threading on your needles too. Jeannie, did you cut off that bottom um, section that was too much fabric? I did not, but if you are not, cause my surgery's just gonna cut it right off. Cut okay. it off. Go ahead and Jeannie. cut it off. If you're not using a serger, if you are using a serger, your serger is just going to cut it. This on here, this, correct? 
Yeah. That was amazing. All right. I have never sewn with my walking foot before. It was quite an experience. Thank you. Yeah, what did you? Well, you've had the walking no, foot and you've never, never used it. Yeah. No, nope, so never used it. It is amazing. Um, on this side. Okay, this. Well, under, you need the small right, one. Hang on, I'm going to mute you guys. Okay. I heard a lot of people talking. Okay, there we go. So on this, I'm just going to put it near the hole, and it's going to suck the thread right in. You don't. You barely need to be able to see. You can be half blind and use this. And it sucks it into the tubes back here, just lift up and I'm threaded. Although it looks like I got, um, there we go. All right, when I do this, I'm just gonna surge and I'm gonna surge right off the edge. So I'm gonna set up, I like to go to about two and a half for my stitch length, six and a half for my stitch width, stitch selector, A, auto tensions everything for me. I'm gonna set it to surging, close up my doors, and now I'm gonna just do my finishing stitch. I'm gonna, I do what's called riding the edge, which means I'm riding the edge of my blade. And I can do a corner, but I'm just gonna surge right off. Jeannie? Yes. Can't I use my walking foot instead of the G foot? You can use your walking foot um the g foot has a flange on it that that you line up next to but uh, yeah if you want to use the walking foot you could just like you kind of have to approximate all you know what let's see if we can do it i'm just finishing up on here but if you don't if you don't have a serger here let's go ahead and do it on the regular machine with the walking foot you probably want to put on maybe your um regular sole I don't even know if I have my regular, so I just brought my uh, open toe in this. I'm gonna go to stitch um, 117. You're gonna have to eyeball it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna practice right here on the edge to see where my, where I would line up, you know, cause I need to know what to line up my edge with. So maybe it'll be this mark, but I don't think that'll go right to the edge. I think maybe right there with the inside of my foot. Okay. You just have to kind of eyeball. For me, if I'm using my walking foot, it looks like it's about a 16th of an inch away from this inside edge. Thank you just you. need to have something that you could keep your eye on. But yes, you can go ahead and just do this stitch all the way around the inside. I'm not gonna do it around the whole thing, but that's what it's gonna look like if you're using uh, stitch 117. And you just have to figure out where your fabric needs to go to make it so that the bite, like the stitch that goes out is gonna be right on the edge. That's the goal. Yes, you can use your walking foot. What's so great about the Solaris and the Luminaire or, or any of the machines that have that dual feed is you can do decorative stitches, which you can't normally do with other machines and a walking foot. And do you need to do that overlocking stitch or can you just be done at this point? I mean, is it- You could just be done. I okay. mean, it's just gonna give a finished edge. So like, how far do you wanna go? You know? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. If you're okay without that finished edge, just be done. I just love this serger because I love that this isn't going to fray. I don't even put like fray check on it, but you could put fray check on these corners and then cut the thread, like let it dry. Should Jeannie, we box you, the bottom? Could you yeah. repeat what um, stitch length you used on the serger? Um, I, my favorite stitch length is 2.5. If I'm doing a four thread overlock, I like to do a stitch width of 6.5. And um, yeah, stitch selector A. 
How about okay. we, we're not going to get a chance because it just took us longer, I think, to do this one. But you guys will have the video. I'll send it to you this evening. You can just go ahead and turn this right side out. Now, if you want to and take a little point turner and push out those corners. If you want to box the bottom, should we just box the bottom really quickly in case somebody wants to do that? Because I know some people aren't comfortable boxing a bottom. I'm gonna box it for you. I'm just gonna, is that called a, what's it called? When you box the bottom, there's like an official name for it. So what I'm talking about is this. So if you wanna have something that has a bottom where uh, you know you could put things in here where it's more dimensional, and it's not totally flat. Oh yes, show us that. Okay, I'm gonna show you that. So what you would do, so we would be all done if I like got my point turner and I turned it out perfectly. And then we have our little zippers and we have all those adorable zipper pulls. I'll grab them and show you in just a minute that you can get, that you can put on here that really give it like a finished look. And then I would go ahead and press this so everything's nice and flat. If you wanna make the bottom like this, all you're gonna do, and I like to measure, so I'm turning it back out. So this is the wrong side, the inside. You just take your fabric, like this is, I'm looking at it at this angle, and you just pull it. So it makes like a little triangle on the top. And feel for the seams to make sure that your seams are lined up. So you want those seams to be lined up. And then you have to decide how much you want to, um, like, do you want it to be two inches? Do you want, I did mine about two inches. So if you want it to be two inches, you're just gonna grab your ruler. And you would just measure. So here's my seam. You'd want an inch from this side and an inch from that side. Make sure you're like lined up, draw a line. Go ahead and just, I usually just throw it right on the serger. but you're gonna draw a line that you're gonna be able to stitch on. Make sure this center line, like I'm on the eight and a half is lined up with this seam because you could flip this over the seams right here. And would you box, would you do this after you've finished the edges either by serger or with the um, overlock? Yeah. yeah, once I'm done with it, I'll do it. You have, yeah, you have to do it after. Okay. So I could go inch and a quarter if I want. So that's inch and a quarter here, inch and a quarter there. I'll just draw a line. I'm gonna take it to my serger and I'll just serge that off, right? Or you just sew it on your sewing machine. Just sew right down that line and then you're gonna trim away. My blade is right there. I'm lining up my blade with that line. I do it on my serger because then it's done. It's done, it's cute. Now I'm gonna do this side too. I'm just gonna grab either side, pull it, make it a triangle. Make sure I'm feeling underneath to make sure my seams are lined up. Whoops. What is not holding this? I don't know, sorry. Okay. Jeannie, are you using a four thread overlock? Four thread overlock, whoops. So we just got a new filming arm and I'm wondering if this thing is bad again, let me see. Okay, all right, same thing. I'm just picking any line on my ruler and then I'm going an inch and a quarter over from either side. No. That's an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. That's one inch and a quarter and an inch and a quarter. Perfect. Draw a line. So Jeannie, when I usually do a box bottom, I usually sew on the line, but you put the serger cutting on that line? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you would just, you would just take your, if you're doing the sewing machine, you would just sew right on that line. Okay. But my serger is gonna sew on that line and then it's gonna finish the edge and then it's gonna cut off the corner. So why not use the serger if you have it? So right, the serger, does all of that. The serger the serger needle is right there after the cutter. Well, I could I could turn it this way or I could turn it this way. Okay. 
No, I got to turn it this way because I need it to cut out. That way to cut it off. Yeah, I got to turn it this way. My blade is right in line with that. Okay. I did break out my serger out of it. I'm just doing my serger because it's one and done. Yeah. I did break my serger out of its box. I have yet to use it. Yay! Okay. And now we have a beautiful bottom where you can put stuff in it. You know what I mean? Where it's not going to be just like a flat front and back. And and there we go. That turned out really cute. Isn't it cute? Don't you love these? And I know that took us a little while longer to do ours um, just because we were trying to stay all together. I will send you the video. Thanks, everyone. (laughs) I'm so glad you were able to join me. Thank you, Jeannie. uh, it Thanks, probably won't Jeannie. be until this afternoon because we have a group coming in. We have a little event happening in the store for our Creative Connection gals. So, um, but I'll send you the video to this. I'll also send you my written directions, which are a little more detailed than what's on the top of the um, the panel. And if you need more panels, ladies, um, I have the panel ones. And they're so cute. So these are the panel. This is panel one. This is the original. And I have a handful of the panel uh, twos. And oops. I do have that one. The zipper pulls too. So when you're Mm. done, you can just go ahead and it really just makes it, doesn't it? So you can take this off. It has like a little lobster claw. And you can just put it on here. And then it just has like, I don't know, just a little bling to it. So these are all on the website. Actually, I don't know if I changed the numbers. So they might not be accurate, but Ryan's going to be here today. So I'll have him put on the numbers, but they're adorable. And you can just put this like on the, on the top. And then if you get tired of it and you want to change it out, you can take it off and put it on something else that you want. These are going to be the Lori Holt ones. Oh, those are Aren't they cute? Oh. Jenny, what um what panel is that you're showing now that's behind your so the pan- and I think you've got them both, Annetta. You got I panel did. one and panel two. This one okay. here, yeah, you got like- them both. This one is panel one, her original one. Okay. And then there's also zippy panel two, which is what I sewed from today. I'd say this one is a little more traditional. The colors are a little bit deeper. And then this one's a little more modern. The colors are a little bit brighter. You should have them both. Because this is a fun project. Once you get in a roll, everything's done. You can assembly line it, put them all together and just have a good time. Great project to do with your friends. Plus there's eight bags in each panel. And uh, I mean, at that price, it's what do they come out to? We did them at $19.99 instead of the $24. So it's like $2 and some odd cents for each bag, not including, you know, your other stuff. Probably like you add, probably like four bucks a bag if you add in your like zipper and stuff. And they're Any both questions, available? ladies? Are they both available on the website? I could choose yeah, you can, the Yes, you can go onto the website. And if for some reason it's saying that it's sold out, email me because, and I'll go ahead and change it. I think I might've, I don't know if I've added the, the yardage, but I got more bolts in yesterday. So we have that. And then I'll have Ryan go in and change the numbers for these. So these will be right. There's other one coming there. The ones with like the little, the sewing machine and the the tomato pin cushion. Those are all coming too. But this Thank is you. what we have. We have like a whole bunch for now. All right, ladies, if you need any of the products from the class, you can do an order online and just say, um, you told me you'd give me 20% off. <laughs> just put that in your notes. And then I'll go ahead and I'll adjust it. And um, thanks for joining me. And I will see you later. Thanks, Jeannie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.